morning, everybody. Welcome to another Dr. Fantastic Interviews. I've got a beautiful artist with me today. Her name is Alex, and she is an abstract artist. Do you call it abstract expressionism, like my dad did when uh, in the 50s? Or what would you call it? Just abstract. Um, abstract expressionism sounds good, and surrealism, and I don't know what to call it. It just... It flows. Everything I do is different. Yeah. yeah. It flows. Well, being an That's artist, true. as I was saying a few minutes ago, today is, it's like you're bragging, you know, it's almost like it's a great thing to be. Uh, when my dad uh, was an artist in the 50s, uh, we were spat on because we, um, we didn't work. You know, back then you had to work eight to five. To be an artist and live by creating art wasn't acceptable. Um, a lot of people didn't understand the amount of work involved in art. It is exactly. a lot of work. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of work. Manual labor and sweat and yeah. blood and, and work and sacrifice. And, yeah. And do you work with oils or? I work with a lot of acrylics and pen and ink and mostly acrylics since they're so big. I just end up buying left onto Crenshaw Boulevard. Uh, just gallons of acrylic paint from Home Depot and going from there. <laughs> And uh, on canvas? Uh, canvas. Wood? And paper and wood and uh-huh. walls. and Collage? Do you make collages? So many, I used to when I was in, uh, when I was younger. I did a lot of decoupage and collage stuff. Because it was fun to cut stuff out and create your own puzzle in a way. Yeah, I, I was raised with collages. Nice. You know, I remember as a child uh, having to make our own Christmas cards and Easter cards yeah. and and it was embarrassing because everyone else got to buy their. Oh no! But those, the getting those. Were but you the didn't. Best. You didn't realize they were that. Personal. They were when, when you're poor and yeah. you're the only one in the class that made his own, yeah. which is, I, I imagine, some people maybe even saved saved them because they were art. Yeah. But it was to when me. When you're young, it's a, yeah. Is everyone else got to buy theirs at uh, at the liquor store? Yeah. You know, that were all, you know, just generic. Uh, Happy Easter or Merry Christmas. So, you know, as a child, you just don't see the picture, you know. Yeah. But uh, certainly it's a, no, it's a changed I a, world. I would do that with an aunt of mine, one of my favorite aunts, who taught me a lot about art. And she still sends her own homemade decoupage cards. The older she gets, the crazier they get. But yeah. They get even better. So. Yeah. I mean, Sometimes art... they're huge and they, they're these big fold-out things. So it comes in a small envelope and as soon as you open it, you fold out this huge thing with people <laughs> faces and lots of expressions of love it's it's really special and really unique yeah and it took time which is our most precious commodity yeah you know and it doesn't matter how good it is even you know it's just something from the heart exactly you know something that you took time to to create Mm -hmm. um i'm gonna get back into painting one day um because uh you know i doodle and it's always you know it's abstract of course And um, I think I would be a good painter. I've I'm done. I've worked in eighty-one different professions. Eighty-one. That's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, pretty unique, anyway. I thought I had a lot. I've been working since I was thirteen, and I can name maybe eighteen, twenty. Yeah, that's a good amount. But I wouldn't even some of them I wouldn't call professions. They lasted two weeks or well, well, no. months, but well, it was well, still you were in it. You experienced the. the well, that's job. why I say it's like yeah. when I was six years old or eight years old, rather. Mm-hmm. I picked grapes. Now that wasn't my profession, right? But, but it's still the, a, the way I look at it is if someone paid me to do something, yeah, and it, it was someone's profession, so I count that as the one of the eighty-one. Yeah, like I was a chef for one day, and I paid I, I charged seven hundred dollars for that meal. And um, it came out well. Nice. Um, and someone's a profession, professional chef. Yeah. So that's one of the 81. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It counts. It, it all counts. counts. It all counts. Yeah. It's all just... A, a, now, with all those 81 under my belt, I feel I have a lot to offer the world as far as mm-hmm. looking at life in a different perspective. Yeah. Because uh, being... Uh, I was born into Beverly Hills, into high society, then uh, quickly moved into lower, lower, lower society with... She married a beatnik, and we moved to Venice. Yeah. Um, and then when they both passed away, I went into middle class society in the valley, and raised with an Italian Mexican foster home. Yeah. So I saw the, the three extremes, you know, yeah. high, low, and middle. And so my, my perspective on life is is quite unique. 
Well, because um, I. I like talking to you about that, though. We can share some similar perspectives on that. Living in many different types of families with different types of incomes and yeah, and, and cultural and, and I think that's good. It's like I tell people: to keep good. trying yeah. new things well, till you it, find your passion. It shows you we all kind of want the same thing. And the same things are equally important to most of us is, is that feeling loved and, and together and safe. Yeah. No matter where you come from or what your, what your income is or what your class status is, it's all, I don't know, it's no, not you're... that different. We're not all that different, no. and even the different languages and different cultures, yeah. it's, it, it comes down to a couple basic things, yeah. you know? Um, being loved and loving others, you know, and it's, it's really a, a fascinating word, love, yeah. you know, I like the Beatles, all you need is love, la da 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 da. So many things fall into that, so it, it doesn't just mean one thing, it, it, it's a plethora of things that fall into that definition of love. And, yeah. So when did you find your uh, art as your passion? Because I tell people, find your passion and look forward to jumping out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Because that makes, then when that happens, you're going to have fun during the day. Oh, yeah. And with that fun, you're going to do it well, whatever your passion is. And if you do it well, you'll make money at it. But yeah. the money is the gravy, is the, the icing. Exactly. The money is the gravy. Being able to do, being capable and able to do something that you love, that's the... That's, That's the, the trick. One. That's yeah. the secret to happiness. Yeah. That is happiness. I asked a lot of people what would make them happy. They did a movie recently on happiness, and mm-hmm. they found the poorest people in the world are the happiest. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people will say that winning uh, the lottery or making a lot of money mm-hmm. would it make them happy. And yeah. it's certainly not true. It really doesn't. But they, I guess that they see that as the, um, the golden pot at the end of the rainbow or something. But I've heard that, um, and it's true, the majority of people who won the lottery have regretted it. Yeah, because it doesn't change your problems. It doesn't change. No, it creates more. Exactly. If you, I mean, it it can be a benefit. It depends on how you. How smart you are. Yeah, exactly. Well, see how secure you are with yourself. Right. But if you think that that money is going to make you a better person or give you chances in life, no, it's not going to do any of that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I always tell you, you don't want to wish fame or fortune on your worst enemy. No. They're both tough to handle. especially. Can you imagine being watched all the time? I don't even want to give my last name on this. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know a lot of famous people, and uh, they're holed up in their mansions. Yeah. And they have a lot of people, the glommers around them, that are protecting them because they don't want to share them. Right. And so you can't even meet new people. No. It's very rare to meet That's someone new. It's lonely and scary it is. too at the same time. It is. You develop paranoias. That and then when you lose people. your money, guess what happens? Everybody disperses. Yep. I had a big yacht, and I had lots of calls every weekend. Mm-hmm. And I my yacht. Yeah. And I sold my yacht a year or so ago, and the phone doesn't ring that often right? anymore. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Funny how that works out okay. like that. Yeah, I had that with time when I, when I had my son. <laughs> They're very different, though. It was a, oh, you can't go out anymore. Nope. Okay. Yeah, people don't realize That's that okay. having a child is a huge commitment, and too many people have children as pets. Yes. And have people babysit them. Pets, Accessories, pets, status. Exactly. That's how our son treated his father was a, look, I'm, I'm a father. I must be a good person, right? No. Mm-hmm. Being, being able to birth a child doesn't make you doesn't change who you are as a person. It's just a fact of biology and life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said before, all parents are amateurs. Oh, yeah. Who were raised by amateurs. Yeah. And so we have generation upon generation of amateurs mm-hmm. raising humans and making lots of mistakes. Oh, yeah. Lots. And we love our kids, learning. but we make mistakes. Yeah. We teach them fear. That's the worst thing, I think. Oh, yes. Is teaching them fear. Yep. And responding to fear. Uh, a lot of what my son and I talk about is, um, you know, regarding when people are pressuring you to do something, if they're pressuring you to do it out of fear, if they're trying to make you afraid, turn the other way. Don't, don't even go for it. It's the same with sales. If people are trying to sell you something to make you afraid. Based on fear. Based like, on fear. It's it, wrong. They're manipulating you. Oh, yeah. So that's not okay. But yeah, I have to remember, as much as I can teach him, I have to check myself, too, and try and remember that because yeah. I've certainly responded in the past and, even now, today, this morning, I was afraid. 
everything turned out, and today is fantastic now. So, yeah. You have to look at a uh, positive manner mm-hmm. in everything. Positive thoughts manifest positive action. Negative thoughts manifest negative action. I, I instruct people to get rid of negative people in their life yeah. and get rid of negative thoughts in their life. And if someone is being negative, turn it into emails. Don't even communicate them with them verbally. Yeah. Have them put it on email or, or text yeah. and say, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Text me. Yeah. And then it's down and it's, it's visually different yeah. when you see it in words. And your the response name calling. is different too. And you, or, yeah. You know, when you feel vulnerable instead of getting yeah, the name calling, the, the baiting. Um, yeah. Yes. I imagine you've had experience with narcissists as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we're dealing with. But, yeah, there's a lot of tricks that they do, but it requires that you talk to them in person. Exactly. Um, so I would reduce it to... Uh, oh, yeah, we've, we've reduced it to emails, emails. a long time yeah, ago. that's good. That's good. And that also means there's evidence of what was said. Exactly. Said. And there's so many morons that right. will put the worst things down in text. Oh, yeah. Like the sexting or whatever, yeah. all kind of things that happen with texting. And yeah. people are such morons. Oh, yeah. And the cops, you see a cop every day beating someone else mm-hmm. in the news. How could a cop not know he's being videotaped? Right. I mean, it just doesn't stand for reason. No. I mean, you have to live under a rock to know that you're not being videotaped every moment of the day. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so um, I, I had this video produced. It's an animated video. And in the first five seconds, it says what the problem is. Yeah. Overcrowded cities around the world have, are breeding greedy, selfish, and litigious people. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. And I hate to say negative things, but we have to state the problem. That is the problem. And the solution now is to, to be a better person. Mm-hmm. And the governments aren't going to make us better people. The, our companies are not going to make us better people. Oh, no, they have nothing to do it with It has to come yeah. from within each one of us yeah. individually. And that's what this movement's about, is being fantastic. When you are a fantastic person, you'll let someone in in traffic. You'll open doors for people. You'll be polite and kind and, and friendly and civil. Yeah. There's no civility. Matter of fact, I watched a movie last night. It was a horrible movie because it's, it's something that shouldn't be made. The, the Joker. The oh, movie yeah, Joker. I know it that. shouldn't it, it, be made. It reminds me of what's that movie with Michael Douglas back in the day where he loses his mind, <laughs> falling. It, yeah. Some I, I forgot what it's called, but it reminds me of that. Only with it's the woman that chased Joker. them and stuff like that. The, I think um, so. Yeah. The mar- uh, yeah. He was married and he had an affair. Yeah, and, and then he ends up at the end of it. He's on the pier and his head's yeah. shaved in a buzz cut. Yeah, it reminded so I me think of that's that. The one. But uh, so this was a really dark movie. Yeah. Um, on the, on the you know showing the dark side of mental um, insanity or mental mm-hmm. you know whatever the word is for it. But um, what it did say at the very end, and when he makes his big speech and he and he kills the guy or whatever, he says there's no civility. Yeah. And it's true, and that's what my whole movement is about, is to create civility, and you find it in small towns. Because everyone is accountable for their actions. Because they all know each other. each other. Exactly. But exactly. it doesn't mean we don't have to be like this. This guy in front of me or the guy behind me, mm-hmm. because they're complete strangers, it doesn't mean I need to honk at him or, or curse him out because he's slow. Right. You know, and, and we really need to get... Because there might be a problem in his life right now that's causing him to be slow. He might have just got a text from his wife. Yeah. She's in the hospital, so he's got to get a moment of, of composure there. Mm-hmm. And we're honking at him because he was two seconds from hitting the gas. Yeah, then you never know. You know, you so, know. and that's, that's assuming, again, that's the, uh, assuming things is always bad, you know. Well, to assume that you don't know, I think, is a healthy assumption. More than assuming you know what's going on with somebody right. you've never met. You right, no, no that's a good way to put yeah. it. You know, most of the time you assume is a negative. Yeah. Um... Do you ever read the book The Four Agreements? Uh, no. It's a great book. It's a great gift. And if society lived by those four agreements, it would be a lot better world to live in. And I, I, I incorporate those in my philosophies. Yeah. Because um, the four agreements are, are real easy. It's be impeccable with your word. Nice. Your words matter. Mm-hmm. Keeping your word matters. There's a lot of things about words. Um, using the right words, of course. Um, the second one is never let what other people think about you affect you. 
Well, that's okay. the hardest one. But that's the easiest one because <laughs> no know. one's opinion matters but yours. I know. But right? That's, that's like a human nature thing. We so we see ourselves through others so yeah. often yeah. that... that I always tell my wife, if I go through a day and a hundred people tell me I'm a loser, my thought is, what are the odds I ran into a hundred wrong people today? Yeah. (laughs) You know, because I know I'm not a loser. Right. Yeah. And I don't care how many people tell me I'm a loser. It's their fault. Maybe they see a beard and they say, oh, the guy has a beard. He's he's a bum. He's a loser. This is the first time I've had a beard like this. But Nine months. If you run into a hundred random people and they don't know anything about you and they're basing their assumptions off of your appearance, then yeah. you know better than... And the third one their... is never make assumptions, yeah. which we just talked about. And the fourth one is always do your best. Yeah. And as an artist, yeah. that's all you can do is your best. Yeah. And, and there is no bad when you do... When you're an artist. Mm-hmm. It's just what you created. I mean, some people it's... will think it's bad. Some people will think it's great. The problem with a lot of people is hmm. they think everyone needs to love them. Right. Yeah, no, you only true. need one person to love you. Yeah. Yourself mostly. Yourself then, mostly. Well, figure that out. The maybe then two. Come. Maybe it's, you need two people to love you. Yeah. Yourself and a uh, mate. Yeah. You know, but sometimes uh, art could be your lover. Yeah. And uh, you're happy with that, and and a cat, you know. Yeah. Because humans are tough. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, for the males and the females to get along, to me, I, it's a miracle. When two. Different species. I call them different species because males and females are not the same species. You know, they always say men are from Mars and women from Venus or whatever. Yeah. They are not the same species. So it's um, it's a funny world. I love I love um, having conversations like this because you know it's it's real. You know, I'm proud to say that of my thousand interviews, never a second take, nice. never a rehearsal, and never an edit. It's you and me having a great conversation. Yeah, you, it's harder to get the truth when you have rehearsals and edits. And, well, plus I'm curious. You know, I'm curious about where you're, when's your next um, showing and and how... Oh, um, I don't have a show. You don't have showings? Okay. Yeah. And sometimes you, you, I sell just, my backdrops. Okay. That's all. Okay. All person to person. And you're sharing your art with your friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always as a gift, too. Those are my homemade gifts, so oh. I'll go through and see what I have. If somebody has a birthday coming up, they get a couple of illustrations. <laughs> there you go. You know, when you exactly that, when you have no money, but I can give you something I made. Yeah, and that's I love you. a lot better and than... this is a part of me to share with a part of you. That is a, the best gift. Yeah. But, yeah, I always feel a little like, oh, crap afford to buy anything so here you go but yeah. it's always it's so appreciated that yeah. it's my wife's making stained glass really now nice. oh that's cool that's, that's, not, that's fun too. yeah and it's expensive and oh it's, yeah it's a great gift as yeah. well but uh, you know I've only made it once and I made a tiny little bumblebee that I gave to my mom when I was a freshman in high school and she yeah. still has it up you see my little bumblebee kitchen. oh you got yes well you know my logo it is, it yeah, is a bee, fantastic and the bee, it says bee fantastic, the bee symbolizes pollinating positivity. Nice. Being positive about everything in your life. Yeah. Your love, your your art, your your your, your son, and your friends. Being positive that everything's going to work out. And even if it doesn't, you can work through. Well, if it doesn't, still, it does. It because you got to look yeah. at the positive side of everything. Yeah. You know, we go through some tough times. That makes us tougher. Yeah. Right? But we got to get rid of the baggage. You can't carry the baggage. You had a bad marriage, it's over. But you got something out of it, a son, mm-hmm. right? And some life lessons, oh, yeah. right? So you got to look at the positive of everything. You know, I spilled my drink the other day, my uh, energy drink in, oh, in my glove compartment. Yeah. I made a mess. And I was thinking, what's the positive out of this, <laughs> right? And you know what the positive was? What? Energy drinks are not healthy. This is true. So this I didn't drink true. an unhealthy drink. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there is a positive side to everything. Oh, yeah, that's everything is always there. You gotta find it though. Mm-hmm. You have to have that that vision to see what's the positive. Yeah. A lot of people say, "Oh, I missed this red light." Oh, it's a bummer. Well, you could say, "I'm first in line in green." Yeah, exactly. You know, look at the positive. Yeah. Oh, especially here. Yeah, well, you yeah. I t- you can't let things stress you. Your ex-husband, the traffic, you know, uh, someone stole something from you, um, whatever happened that's bad, you can't let it affect you. 
you got to, you know, when you lose everything, you've got less to take care of. Yeah. You know, sometimes I see um, the guys living in the streets, and I got to believe a lot of them are stress free. Yeah. Because they have no mortgage. They have, all they have to be concerned with is living, which is eating, eating and sleeping. Safety and shelter, and safety, yeah. exactly. So, um, you create your own destiny, you know? Your life is your movie, and it's up to you to make a great epic. Or a horror story, like that movie. It, that's just, yeah. It's not necessary to make a movie like that. It's, yeah, I don't it see really a isn't. in it either. And, and it's... A, and it's well, sad to say is there's a lot of people like that. I, I might, yeah. uh, remember I told you Alexandria? Mm-hmm. Well, she worked in a mental institute, and she would risk her life every day oh, at, yeah. uh, um, with these severely um, uh, mentally sick people. Mm-hmm. It was Fair, Fairview State Hospital. I mean, for the criminally insane. Yeah. And um, there are a lot out there on the streets. Oh, yeah. And um, it's... It's, I don't know if we have to, maybe sometimes to make a movie like this is to show people that we need to be more civil, which is, I, I like that message from it, you I like know. the message, but I, I, it doesn't sound like the movie. No. The movie might say well, that, my, but it doesn't, it doesn't express It really, it I don't think that's the message people come away. I would hope no. maybe that's the message people come away with. I would hope so. I yeah, like it because every day I tell people to be civil. And yeah. this is my movement is, let's create a civil world. You know, civility is out the door in the big cities because it's a rat race, because it's a jungle, and it doesn't need to be that way. No, and it's still, if we're accountable for our actions. It's still there if you see it. It's know. there, yeah. It's as simple as holding the door. So you know, when I made this bumper or, sticker, it says um, "Be Fantastic," yeah, which is on the back of this car, mm-hmm. and a few others. Um, I just ordered some more of them. I, I was inspired because at one of my interviews in the car here was a girl from Brazil and she says they have all these bumper stickers throughout the country mm-hmm. the cities that says be kinder nice which is wonderful it's yes. the same thing as yeah. be fantastic be kind to one another yeah let someone in in traffic it makes you feel good makes them feel good when it's more efficient if that's what people are going for if they want things to move faster it overall is more efficient to just be kinder to each other I'm hoping in five years when you drive down the road in a big city and everyone starts letting you in you're going to say, Monty pulled it off. Hey, there we go. <laughs> That's my dream. So I'm looking forward to That's that day. It's a beautiful dream. It is a beautiful it's dream. It's really beautiful, Monty. And unfortunately, people will only be kind if they know there's a reward. Now, if you knew the guy you're letting in is the guy you're going to see in the interview, yeah. you're going to do it because there's going to be a reward from it. He's going to think better of you. Unless now, you can find a way. I mean, when I'm kind, the reward is for myself. That's how it should be. Yeah. But a lot of people say, well, I'll, I'll donate to your charity, but what do I get? Do I get the cruise and a win, right? maybe yeah. an opportunity to win that car no, and a nice kindness. dinner? That's, no, that's not kindness. That's not kindness. It's not the same, yeah. But, and the really great people are the anonymous donors mm-hmm. who don't need to be patted yes. on the back and, and have a reward for it. Because yeah. no one knows they gave a million dollars. Right. Which I think is... But they just wanted to help somebody. Exactly. That is, somebody might make that is that is true, true um, greatness. Altruism. Altruism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really. That's now I, I do know a lot of wealthy people, and the billionaire uh, uh, guy that I know that has a hundred billionaire clients. He told me that there's no billionaires out there that are truly giving for kindness. Yeah. Because they get a. Um, uh, tax credit yep. when they get a lot of money and it's and it's actually dollar for dollar yeah. so they're not really giving away anything nope. but it, uh, it looks good I've got a few randoms like George Lucas and Bill Gates they do some stuff at least now, Bill but Gates seems to be pretty smart he's not yeah. going to spoil his kids with billions Right. I think he's giving them each 10 million or something like that good. which is a nice nest egg well it depends you know? on how you raised them too it sounds like they've yeah if you if you place pri- happiness as a priority and instead of what kind of car you have or what your house looks like yeah my, none of that my really best friend yet. who introduced me to my wife had the beautiful cars and the mansion and yeah. 
all the toys, and he, he killed himself. Oh, he wasn't happy. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, possessions don't buy happiness. No, and the disappointment just it compounds the sadness when you think you buy all this stuff and you think it's going to work, and you get home and you're still alone. You're still stuck with yourself. Yeah. So I'm on a mission, and these kind of conversations, if people listen to them, mm-hmm. will eventually open up the light. Yeah. Um, the one where I got arrested, mm-hmm. that helps. I know it helped at least one person because oh, he, yeah. he said he listened to it. And a few days later, he was in a really bad situation. Yeah. And he thought back of if Dr. Fantastic can f- feel fantastic getting arrested, yes. then I can <laughs> handle this situation without exactly. blowing up. And he yeah. normally would have yeah. blown up and had a tirade in there. Yeah. But he was calm, cool, and collected Good. and did a great thing because of that video. Yeah. So if these videos on the YouTube and the, and the audios on, on the podcast and the radio show can help a little, a few mm-hmm. or many, even better. Yeah, um, then, even if one person can relate to that, they yeah. change their course to yeah. a better direction because of that. Yeah. And I'm real you proud know. to know that I have eight teachers right now that every day before class have all the kids say, I am fantastic. Oh, wonderful. Isn't that great? Yes. Builds their self-esteem, yes. gives the energy to the room, starts off the lesson with great positivity. And no matter what you came from from home, the, the, the rest of your day can be what you want it to be. Exactly. Yeah. It can be pretty rough at home, but you have to um, put that behind you. Mm-hmm. Even put the last five minutes behind you. Just yeah. it's Today, the present, the moment, is it's what counts. Get rid of that baggage. I call it baggage. It's a lot of baggage. Because everybody's got it, too. Just, Some people. Well, think see, I they, think they, they one let of it my tear them down and they forget. Like, can you? Everybody's got something. Well, I think my one of my blessings is mm-hmm. is my poor memory because I can't remember all the bad things. Oh, that's a gift. Yeah, I, I think it's a gift. Recently, there are things I can't remember either that my parents have brought up, and I'm like, I don't remember any of that. And the only <laughs> response I got, no explanation, just oh, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. It, okay, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even gonna ask. I'm just gonna roll with this because it feels okay now. So <laughs> things are good. Yeah, yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I mean, and it was so long ago. What am I gonna do? About it, it you now? can't carry it with you. No. Yeah. But unless you're looking for everyone for pity. Right. If you're and looking, that's the last thing I want. That's the last thing you want. Yeah. And I tell people, why would you sell... See, the millennials give me an argument for not saying I am... Uh, for saying if I say I am fantastic when I'm not, yeah. I'm being disingenuous or I'm lying. And I tell them, that's being selfish, what yes, you just said. Yeah. Because all you're Very thinking of so. with that statement is yourself. Mm-hmm. When you say you're fantastic to someone, you've made them smile, yeah. which made them live longer, look better, and feel better. And you've put things at ease. You've yeah. Things you've given things a, a, a happier. Well, let me time. ask you, Alex. How many people in your life say they're fantastic when asked that you've met? A few at work, actually. That might have heard your podcast. Thinking about it. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's the only response they have is I am fantastic. Really? No matter what's happening. If they're at work, day. they do that. A few people I know. At okay, work. we yeah. give these two cards to them. Oh yeah. Because they, if they're not part of the group, they need to be definitely. Yeah. Because everyone who's already fantastic needs to be part of the movement. Yeah. And I, I, I met a guy recently, 35 years he's been saying it. Mm-hmm. And another guy over at Coachella um, a couple months ago, 25 years. Nice. And uh, I've got 1,900 people doing it now. And uh, did you join YouTube, by the way? Oh, you don't have YouTube. That's right. Oh, I just, I don't have the app on my oh, phone. Oh, you should try to get it. Oh, home. you do? Yeah. Okay, when you get home, we get to work. I want you to join the movement. And you're going to be around 1916 in the world. Put that on the back of your phone. That'll remind you to be fantastic. You got my card, right? Yeah. And uh, be fantastic. Just be. And enjoy the practice. I tell my son all the time, you you aren't just one thing. If you want to be something, it's a practice like it is with anything else. And saying it, I am fantastic. Yes. Well, they say, look in the mirror. And do affirmations every morning. I am beautiful. I am happy. I'm healthy. I am fantastic. I'm successful. You know, all those affirmations. And the subconscious will start believing it. Yeah. Because oh, subconscious yeah. has got a lot to do with it. We do that enough with the bad things. Why not the positive things? Exactly. You tell yourself you're a loser, and you are a loser. Yeah. Tell yourself you're a winner, and you're a winner. It's not that, it's not brain science, but... Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have smart friends and they haven't been given the right guidance. Yeah. I got lousy guidance even from my high school counselors. They, they, I, they never gave me any good guidance. 
but it is what it is. It makes you who you are. Yep. And uh, I want to thank you for participating in a nice podcast. Oh, thank you. It's, um, it was great. Everybody, be fantastic. Uh, my radio show is the third Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m. on HealthyLife.net. Uh, and, of course, if you haven't joined uh, the, the movement, go to YouTube and put in Be Fantastic Movement. It's B-E space fantastic. And uh, join the movement. Let's all make the world a more civil place, everybody. Be fantastic. Bye-bye.